and it is about your sort of perfect, typical all-American cheerleader. She dates the captain of the football, the American football team, um, and her family and friends all think maybe she's a lesbian, and they sh uh, have an intervention and ship her off to a program called True Directions, which teaches teenagers to not be gay. Uh, and she meets a girl there and falls in love. What made you decide <laughs> this is a musical? It's got to be a musical. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the first time I saw the film, um, Andy and I met in the BMI Lehman Engel Musical Theatre Workshop in New York, and my roommate at the time had rented the DVD of But I'm a Cheerleader. So I was like, I was thinking about musicals in general. And the first time I sat down and watched the movie, I was like, this is a musical. And I had just happened to have seen it in the theater, actually, myself, not just, but prior to that. And yeah. um, I, it wouldn't be a movie that I necessarily would have taken myself to see, but someone asked me to go. And I was like, this is funny. <laughs> and so when Bill, Bill actually approached me uh, in the workshop about writing it, and I was like, this is, a f I'd seen it, and I thought it was a great idea. So that was when we started doing it. Yes. So how long, long ago was that? What was the journey you've been on with it this? Was, uh, it was way too long ago. Yeah. Um, I will say, so we started writing it in, in class, basically. We did our first presentation, or like our first like full production was in the New York Musical Theater Festival. That was in 2005. So it was a long time ago. It was a, it was a, it was a whole other world ago, <laughs> yeah. actually. It was before social media. It was, um, and we, at the time, had got, gotten great reviews. Everyone thought the show was going to like move ahead. We had Broadway producers interested. And then, you know, over the years, things fall apart with one set of producers. And then we're like with another set and we're with them for a couple of years and things fall apart. And, um, and we, you know, at that point, we had sort of given up on it. And then we had an opportunity in 2013 to do a reading of the show here in London. Um, and had a West End producer who sort of, we were, thought the show was moving forward for like three years before it all fell apart again. <laughs> and then uh, Paul Taylor Mills invited us to be part of MT Fest, the first MT Fest in 2019. Um, and that Here has directly led to this. <laughs> yes, just with a little pandemic in the middle of it. Right, yeah, like we, like, uh, I was telling you before, we were originally, this production was supposed to open in the summer of 2020. And it's been kicked, the can has been kicked down the road a <laughs> few times. I mean, it has been a heck of a journey, but finally yes. you're here. How does it feel now to, to have the show opening? That's amazing. I mean, it's surreal, it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it is, it's great. I mean, it's so funny because the, you know, we're obviously older than when we did the show in 2005 and uh, where the cast was sort of around our age at that time. <laughs> and, and, now, and now we sort of feel like the more distinguished gentleman in the room, like. Um. Yeah, and it's neat to, you know, we, we have never had this much, co you know, with costumes and set and everything, we've never had it done this full out before. So it's really special. And we're actually having tracks made for an orchestration made for the music, which I've never had done before. So for me, it's musically, it's this giant, you know, um, leap forward and new color added to the show. Yeah, and it's also exciting because, um, you know, when we first did the show, the film came out in 1999 is when it, it was, at, I think, the Toronto Film Festival, and then uh, it was released in the States in 2000. And in the intervening 20 years, like they just released a 20th anniversary director's cut of the film, and there's just an entire generation of young queer people who I think this movie means an awful lot to them in a way that wouldn't have been the case if we had gotten to do this yeah. back in 2006, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that exactly what I was going to come on to. Actually, the fact that you've been on this long journey with it, is 2022 actually the perfect time to release a musical like yeah. this? Yeah, I mean, it does feel, I, you know, I kind of cautiously want to say, like, as we come out of the pandemic and get back to normal life, I'm just, like, hoping that that is <laughs> the case, you know? But I do feel that, like, yeah, maybe this is the perfect time for the show, which is all about self-acceptance and um, queer joy and embracing who you are. And I think that that, I think that these last two years of the pandemic have really made people re-examine what's important to them in life. And, and frankly, I just, you know, the show is very funny and a lot of fun. And I just want people to come and have a good time. Have a good time, yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, we wrote this show to be, you know, um, formula-wise, like an old-fashioned musical, like structurally, 
Um, musically, it's it's got all sorts of different kinds of feels to it. It is built like an old show with a modern twist. Yeah, like there's you know there's like an opening number. There's a dream ballet in the show. Yeah, like, it's even a dream ballet. Like, not very. It's not, not very long. It's not like yeah, Oklahoma. No. <laughs> but <laughs> it's there. It's, it's there. there. And um, in terms of the cast themselves, how many were involved back at MT Fest in 2019? Only got one this... in, in a different role. Actually, yeah, wow. completely, <laughs> different role. completely different role. Completely, yeah. How amazing! Uh, you know, one um, of the cast was. Yeah, I mean it's of course timing. There's we've gotten to work with so many incredible performers over this journey, and I mean even Hannah Waddingham did our first reading of it here in this. In, in the UK 2013, yeah. in 2013. So. Matt Henry did the MT Fest version. Yeah, I mean, so we've we've had the opportunity to work with some like really special performers, and this cast is no different. I mean, they're it's it's very exciting to to watch them. Uh, one time we tried to do a tally because we've we did songs in class, we did works, you know, we had uh, master classes of people. So we tried to put together a list of how many people have worked who have sung songs from this show or done scenes in class and workshops and master classes and it's like hundreds of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> Literally it really hundreds I of mean, people. I mean, I'm seeing a film or a TV series about how you've come to this I wish that we had show. known in a way <laughs> right, yeah. so that we could have done a documentary. <laughs> so that we could have had yeah. been following us for the last 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Just missed the like, trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we only knew in 2005. <laughs> right. <laughs>